When it comes to self hosting, we're always looking for ways to take back control of our information. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can host your own Joplin backend server using Docker, more specifically Docker Compose, so that you can use the Joplin application, but rather than trusting someone else with your information, you can have full control of it yourself. So if you're not familiar with Joplin, now Joplin is just a simple note taking application. It uses Markdown. So as you can see here on the left, it's very straightforward and Markdown is very powerful for making really nice notes and also just creating like to-do lists and stuff like that. You can also see on the right hand side here of just the preview of what you've been writing down in the Markdown here. Now the great thing about Joplin, you don't actually need to know Markdown to create all of this stuff. So if I actually delete this, we can see that the preview is clean. If we want bold text, so I can go, um, hello world. So if I wanted this bold, I can click bold. It will do the markdown for us so it's all there. So we can use all of the features at the top window here to do the markdown for us. But if you are comfortable with markdown, then you also have that full control to do you know, a heading if you would rather do that instead. So the main difference here is that rather than installing the Joplin application on for example, this is my MacBook, and then saving the information into the cloud or wherever, the backend server for this is actually running on my home server. I'm not interacting with a cloud server in any way. This is all staying in-house. So as you can see, this is the backend server for Joplin. So the Joplin server that I am self-hosting. And you can see here all the notes and everything that I am running has been synced from the Joplin application and has been synced right to my backend server here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can get this backend server all set up how you can connect it to your existing Joplin application. So you can tell Joplin, hey, look, this is where all my notes should be synchronized to. So I just wanted to show you here, this is the configuration of Joplin. Now, what we've got here is you can see there's some kind of default methods for the synchronization, right? So you can have it off, so it just doesn't sync anywhere it just saves locally you can choose your own one so joplin cloud dropbox onedrive the local file system next cloud if you wanted to uh, if you had s3 or whatever or which is in beta which is the joplin server and that's what i'm going to be showing you how you can get set up now so this is on one of my home servers at the moment and you can see that i've just created a folder called joplin and inside of joplin what i've got is the docker compose to stand up the joplin server now, if we just have a quick look at this Docker Compose file, so a link to the, my documentation that contains this Compose file will be in the description of this video. There you'll find a full breakdown of the Compose file and just some things you should keep in mind and just what is happening in the Compose file. But I'll briefly explain it here as well. So what we've got here is two services that we're actually gonna be deploying for Joplin. Now, keep in mind, we are not deploying the front end application for Joplin, right? The where you actually do all your notes that you can just download from the Joplin uh, website. And I'll show you that in a second. And again, a link for that will also be in the description. You download the front end and then you tell the front end to point to and save everything to the server. And that's what we're deploying here. So this contains a database more specifically a Postgres database, right? So this is what we're going to be deploying. And the Postgres database is going to be looking for a data folder, okay? Now, we want to manually make this, so we'll make this in a second once before we run this uh, deployment. We're going to, the database is going to be running on port 5432, and we're going to set some environment values here. So we're going to say that the password for our Postgres is going to be just testing123. Please change this. This is just a placeholder value. The Joplin user is just going to be called Joplin. You can feel free to change this if you want, but leave it as default if you don't want to change it. And the Postgres database name is also just going to be called Joplin DB. Now for the actual additional service that we've got here is the actual application itself of the Joplin backend server. And you can see that this is just using the official Joplin server image, and it's just going to deploy the latest version. Now we, we've got a depends on here, so it's going to make sure that the actual Postgres database is up and running before it actually deploys the Joplin server. And Joplin server can be accessed on port 22300, okay? Feel free to change that if you wish, but that's just the default port. Now, when it comes to here, you want to make sure that the app port and this port match. So if you do change this, please change it here. The app base URL is actually the URL you're going to access your Joplin server on, right? So you need to include the port if you're going to be accessing this locally. If you are going to make this public and make it publicly accessible, then this is where you'll put the domain name in instead. So if you're going to 
deploy this using something like Cloudflare. If you're interested in how you can expose your Docker containers using Cloudflare, I have a link somewhere. And you could um, you know, deploy it that way with a domain name. So you would just change this to a domain name. If you have any questions around that, please ask in the comments below or jump into the Discord server. Link is in the description and I'll help you out. Now the DB client, we can leave that as default. The Postgres password needs to match up here. So please make sure that these match. And the Postgres database, again, make sure these values match and as well as the user, make sure they match. The Postgres port, which is 5432, which is this one up here. Again, make sure those match. And then you can leave the Postgres host as DB because it's looking for, so DB is here and it's matching it to here. So just make sure that they're all like that. And those are the values we're going to use. Again, the documentation that's linked in the description will have a full breakdown of this compose file. So make sure to check that out. So I'm going to save this now. And again, before I actually deploy this, we need to make that data directory. So I'm just going to do that. So make directory data. And the reason we do that is that if I didn't actually run it, you can see the data folder that I just made is owned by my TechDocs user. We want this to be owned by the TechDocs user because if Docker deploys it and runs and this folder hasn't been made, it will make it itself, but it will be owned by root and you can get file permission errors. But enough talking about that. Once we've got our configuration, it's just a matter of doing Docker, compose up, hyphen D and hitting enter. Now, that was really quick on my side because I already have the image pulled. So your one might take a little bit longer, but once it's pulled that image, the rest should be the same. Now jumping back into the compose, you can see we're actually going to access it on this URL here. So let's jump to our browser. Now I've already logged into it at this point, but if I hit refresh, it should, yeah. So it's, you know, it's all been reset now. So let's go to that domain again and hit enter. And now this is what you will see. We are in a fresh server now. So the default password here is admin at localhost. And the password is admin, okay? Let me make this a bit bigger for you. There you go. And we can hit login. And here we are, so we're now into the backend Joplin server. So it's saying here, you know, to start using Joplin server, make sure you download one of the Joplin applications, either for desktop or your mobile phone. So if we go here, you can see Windows, Mac OS, Mac OS for, you know, uh, Silicon and Linux. So you're going to be supported. And if you go into the app store, say if you're on iPhone or uh, Android or whatever, you can download the Joplin app as well. So I've already installed the Joplin app on my Mac, but if we just jump back to the Joplin server really quick, you can see the main thing here is telling us to change the password, right? Because our password is uh, just admin. So make sure you click change it now and you change that password. Now, if we click into items, you can see there's no items here because our Joplin application has not been synchronized to our server. So now let's go into our Joplin app. I'm going to assume you have installed it by this point and let's get it configured to point to our Joplin server. Right, so I'm going to assume you've opened up your Joplin application and this is what you now see, right? So once you've got this here, what we need to do is on Mac, I'm going to click on the Joplin, but if you're on Windows or Linux, just look for settings and we're going to go into settings. And within settings, what we're going to want to do is click synchronization. And then in synchronization, where it says synchronization target, we're going to click here and we're going to click Joplin server beta. Now we're wanting to put the full URL of our Joplin server as well as the port. So exactly how you accessed it on your web browser is how you're going to put that URL here. Now for the server email and password, those were those default credentials that you logged in for the first time. Now, if you change the password, hopefully you did, you will put the new password here and the username, if you change the username or whatever it is, make sure that is correct as well. You can also change the synchronization interval. So if you want it to sync every five minutes, it will. Disabled if you would rather do it manually, and then the rest of the values are self-explanatory. I'm gonna leave minus five minutes. Great, so we've got all that all set up. So if I hit apply now, that should all be set up, I'll hit back. So everything's been synced. So if I go um, to our Joplin server now and refresh it in the item screen, we should see some values now. So I refresh and there we go. We can see that our markdown file has been set up now. If we go to admin and go to tasks, you'll see that there are a few cron jobs here. And what a cron job is, it's just a task that's scheduled to run at a specific time. So you can see that 
Our droplet server is pretty much going to be cleaning itself up over time. So it's going to make sure that the expired tokens are cleaned. It's going to compress old changes. It's going to delete, you know, process the user deletions, all of that good stuff. So it's cleaning itself up in the back end as well. So under the users panel, you'll know how we configured when we logged in, we logged in with our admin user, right, to sync it up to the joplin server now when you're going to have multiple people you're going to ideally want to have a specific account rather than just admin being on used on everyone's thing so what you would actually do is add a new user right give it its name and then in the joplin app when you configure the back-end server you would use your personal credentials uh, for, that you've been set up in your Joplin server instead rather than just using admin everywhere. So I hope that makes sense on how you can create your own Joplin server to take control of the information that you're putting into Joplin rather than putting it into you know a cloud provider or just saving it locally. It's just a way that you can access it regardless of where you are. Uh, if you've got any questions again ask in the YouTube comments or jump into the Discord server invite is in the description and uh, I'll be more than happy to try and help you as best as I can. Documentation in the description as well which will help you with the compose file and a breakdown of what's going on. Thank you so much for all the support lately. If you made it through this far in the video please give a like and a subscribe. That would be really awesome if you can do that. Uh, but yeah I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye bye.